There you go, son. It's gonna happen now. Hopefully the surgery will go good and I get the relief from my neck. Because I've been having a hard time with this for so many weeks. I was supposed to go in at 3.35. I'm now going in uh, a quarter to one. Yeah. So thank God. Yeah, there's space, so I get to go in. Are you keeping your retainer in? Oh, can you get the heart? Uh -huh. I can get to wash it then. I'll wash it too. Can you wash it then? Yeah. So, pag may kambal. Yeah. See you in a little bit. Am I going now? Yeah. Oh, okay. Hi. Hello. Are you ready for me? Bye, son. We'll see you. Thank you. Relief on the other side. So we'll see you, son. So I'm back in my room after having surgery. The procedure of putting the stents. Instead of one, they put two on the left and the right side. Just to, um, you know, because there was swelling on both sides gotten so complicated because of the cancer but I'm back in my room there was a major complication when I was in the recovery room the recovery area so I thought everything was fine they had to put a catheter in me during the surgery and something went wrong there because um, there was trauma apparently so when I went to recovery room I had to pee and so the, the attendee I don't know if she was a nurse or what who was watching over me goes, oh, go ahead, go ahead and pee. And then so I, I peed, but then it wasn't catching something. And then when I looked down, it was blood. And I'm talking about like blood bath. It was, I was freaked out. And when you looked at it, it was just blood. Lots of blood, blood. I didn't, you know, so they called neurology and they, they, um, had to come over. When they came over, they wanted to stick a catheter inside, and they did, and I watched it. Never ever had one done to me ever in my life. And they were putting it in, putting it in, and it stopped, it wouldn't go in any further. And I could just see blood and everything fell. Although they didn't clean any of that stuff that was there prior. So there was blood, and then he couldn't finish it, so he called his colleague, a female colleague. So she came and she tried. And mind you, my penis is out. <laughs> Had that ever before, but um, so she's holding it, trying to put it in. It didn't go in any further. So they took it all out, and then they said, "We'll be back." Uh, they left, and it seemed a while, and I was just. They had to sit there, seeing all of that. I was just sitting there and in shock because, and I called my brother, I called you, right? Mm -hmm. And I was just, he was explaining what happened. I'm trying to calm down. I already have a lot of things going on with cancer here. I need my battles. But, you know, they say in life, there's challenges. Anyway, so a third urologist came in, a third doctor with a whole bunch of equipment. They have different methods. So he was prepping and all that stuff and asking questions. And then I had to pee. Uh, they didn't have one of these urinal thingies. They didn't have one of these near. So the attending nurse, I don't know what, whoever was there, she had to run and try to find one of these. And when they did, I was able to pee on my own. And so he, his face was like, oh, Okay, you know, you're peeing on your own, which is the goal. So I peed, peed, I peed a decent amount, somewhere like up to here. So it was like, there's some blood in there, but not clots. He said, I'm not putting in a catheter. So that's a good thing. But the problem is um, there's still dabs of blood at the end. So we're monitoring it. They say it's normal because the trauma, there was trauma. And then there's, you know, the catheter that was put in there. And I'm sorry, I have to speak quiet because I have a neighbor and I don't want to be rude. Yeah, but that's what happened. Today did not go without a hitch. And, but hopefully I have relief. My veins aren't popping out like they were already. So 
that's the update for now. Transformed yeah. into something that looks really different now mm -hmm. than what you had originally? Mm -hmm. Or is it a new lung cancer? The, the genetic molecular testing of the cancer tissue may help. Mm -hmm. There are certain mutations that are very classic for lung. Mm -hmm. There are some that are classic for thyroid. Okay. There is some overlap. So it is possible we won't know 100% no matter what. Yeah. Um, if we're not sure, the genetic testing may help, but that's gonna take weeks to come back. While we're waiting, we may pick a slightly different chemo to cover both lung and mm -hmm. thyroid. Yeah. The one that covers both, people do usually lose their hair. Okay. So that's the one difference, yeah. okay? I don't think we're gonna treat you today, especially with the fever. Yeah. We want to make sure there's no infection because yeah. then chemotherapy would be more risky. Yeah. But I'm hoping by early, it may just be your cancer causing the fever, it's mm -hmm. possible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping by early in the week, we can get you started like yeah. Monday or Tuesday, okay. okay? It's such a case that needs to happen right this minute. Yeah. We have time to sort of do some of these We pieces. do, yeah. but we'll keep a really close eye yeah. on yeah. the liver tests, yeah. your fevers, mm -hmm. your blood counts. Yeah. Both for safety of chemo and then also to not miss a time when we want to make sure your liver doesn't start to, the way it works, mm -hmm. doesn't start to be affected. Because yeah. some of our chemotherapy, the liver removes it from your body. And so we want your liver to be working well mm -hmm. when you get chemo. So, but we're watching it every single day. It's just a tiny bit. Okay. It's not like it's at all, okay. the way it's working now is fine. Yeah. Um, but we just don't want to wait three weeks and get yeah. into a situation where maybe it is starting to be affected by yeah. the cancer that looks like it is is in the liver. Yeah. If it keeps growing, at some point it may affect the way the liver actually works. Okay. We're not there yeah. well, by any there. means, yeah. but we don't want to get there. Yeah, we want to so do something before that. That's why do the chemo already. That's the idea, yeah. But I think on Monday, that's when the pathologists are here and we can really push them. Mm -hmm long thyroid they already said lung mm -hmm. but we just want to push them a little harder because yeah. endocrine who are the thyroid cancer experts mm -hmm. still had some questions yeah. your thyroglobulin level is a little high mm -hmm. and we can't exactly explain that mm -hmm. it is even possible there's a little thyroid cancer and lung cancer mm -hmm. so we're just all talking behind mm -hmm. the scenes to try to sort this out okay. Okay, but we have a backup plan that will cover everything if we need to. Okay? Okay. Is that, I know it's a, a lot. It's a lot. <laughs> a lot. Yeah. That, if you can just get the treatment ready so that we're ready to yeah. start. Yeah, we're, we're, wanna, we're watching, we're watching yeah. closely. We're making sure that we're in that window and yeah. when, when we can get it safely. And yeah. yeah. Most cancers, okay. there are a few exceptions, yeah. but most cancers, once they spread from where they start to somewhere else, um, we generally don't think about cure. Mm -hmm. Although more and more, for some people, we're able to manage it as more of a okay. chronic thing. But it is going to depend on the specific features of your cancer when we get the test results back. And it may depend on this distinction, lung, thyroid. I don't know. I do think it's growing quickly, you know? It's so growing quickly. It's so growing it's, quickly. I thought they, they, they were saying it wasn't moving. It wasn't. Usually papillary cancers, thyroid cancers mm -hmm. don't, mm -hmm. but even the scan you had in October mm -hmm. to the one you had, it was like October 23rd mm -hmm. to November 14th. Mm -hmm. Um, there's definitely been changes. Things have grown. Mm -hmm. Like I can see it mm -hmm. during that three week time. Okay. And there were new spots in the liver that were not there before. Oh, there's these. There were on the one in November compared to October. So how many are there right now? That, I know there are multiple. Yeah. Okay. I know. So. Hang in there. I know, like, we, we'll get you. St I do think we're going to start something and we don't want to wait, but it may take another two days to just actually start. Okay. I know it's a lot of information. You doing okay? Yeah. It's a lot, right? It's a lot because yeah. I thought that, you know, there was going to be 
you know, better treatment options. I work. think there's a chance we'll have very good treatment options, mm -hmm. but I also think there is a chance it'll be chemotherapy. Yeah. And we just, the waiting, I think the waiting is really hard. Like, yeah. I think the waiting sometimes is harder than being on treatment. Like, yeah. Once you know what the plan is and what to expect, yeah. but the uncertainty <coughs> is really hard. To yeah. Work. Okay, well, we'll keep checking in. Okay. Yeah, and if you guys think of other questions, you can always break them down so that when we come, you have your questions. And your team knows how to get in touch with us, too. Mm -hmm. Okay. Great. Thank you. Yes. All right. Thank you. Uh, you'll move rooms, too. Oh. So that would be when you get treated, oh. you'll be in a private room. Okay. But okay. it may not happen until we know okay. when we're going to start. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. So I'm here at Radiology Radiation Oncology to do my uh, practice for the treatment. So I'm in the room for Radio Oncology now where they're going to do a CT scan on me. It's pretty lonely looking. So the end, anyways, uh, the purpose of doing, of being here in radiation oncology is because we're going to try to attack the tumor as you guys heard through here. So this is that first step in doing that. So the CT scan first with the stents so they know where they're going to place the radiation because they, they only do it in one place and then it'll be 10 treatments, 10 to 15 minutes long. And that's it for now. So I'm in the ultrasound room. They want to check more details on the liver. Now that I'm diagnosed with lung cancer, we have to also make sure that the liver is not going to go haywire. So we're here now in the ultrasound room. Wish me luck. Hey guys. All right, a lot has happened. I haven't been filming much because I've taken so much information in about my condition you know uh i will be starting treatment finally or hopefully tomorrow but with the advancement of my my condition because it's pretty uh aggressive one of the understand things is it's lung adenocarcinoma uh, or commonly known as lung cancer even though i have i don't smoke and do all those things um, but i've been in the hospital now for since last sunday so about a week now you can see all the injections, look all these things in my arms, see this? And there's confusion because of my old thyroid condition. You know, the debate is there that what if it is that too? Also, there was extreme trauma to my body because they put in a uh, Foley and they probably inflated it too soon that I was just gushing out blood from my lower region and it was the most shocking thing as soon as you wake up from surgery <coughs> <clears throat> that's definitely one thing you don't want to see so anyways I've been sharing a room for how many days now but now I'm gonna be transferring to the uh, chemo ward because I'm gonna be starting my first treatment of chemo again we we're just doing treatment right now to stop the growth because it's pretty aggressive. I'm really excited about getting started. It felt kind of weird because we weren't doing anything because at UCSF they really want to make sure they get the right formula before they proceed with any kind of um, you know treatment so but because of all those different factors of my old cancer did it mutate the new cancer yeah that's where I am at right now. I've been having fevers lately I, today I feel weak because I started bleeding again downstairs because I'm on blood thinners for life now because of that happened by the way because I, uh, they put some stents in my body and you guys remember that I said it to you guys so because of the blood thinners it's making it a little bit more difficult for me to heal right now I only need, need to speak to one more set of doctors today it's the um, infectious diseases they just want to make sure that we don't have anything that we leave behind before we start chemo so that we have the best confidence that when I start chemo I'm at the optimal 
you know, um, condition to start it. Not, there seems to be, there is also spread in my liver and it's also moving as well. So <coughs> it's important we get that chemo in to stop the growth already. So that's where we are. That's my updates for now. Here we got Jeezy who's been with me every day and mom who came back right away to be with me. Right now I feel really weak, I feel tired. Maybe because of this issue that I had this morning. If you saw all this blood coming out, uh, it was horrible. It's probably the, one of the most traumatic things I've ever been through, really. So, taking care of that. I just feel weak today, I feel really tired. It's like I can't even sleep off the tiredness. And then on top of that, I'm dealing with my kidneys. Uh, the salt, the sodium in my body, we're trying to increase it. I was at the right place already, but then it started to decrease. So we're working on that as well. All right, <laughs> that's it for now.